Hello everyone and welcome to the Enemies Elliot and thank you for joining me as we talk about chapter 185 of the We Never Learn manga series. A chapter that gives us as the reader that long awaited I love you moment from Miss Kirisu towards our main protagonist. But was it as good as the confessions that we've had from other female characters? Well let's take a look at this chapter and kind of break it down and go by segment by segment and look at it as a collective. So it's Christmas time and well better to do than to go to a theme park. And this theme park, although has a different name, looks very similar to the theme park that appears in chapter 119, when Nada Yuki travels back in time to experience some roller coaster rides with a younger Miss Kirisu. Now, I really did like this callback. I thought it was really cool, really refreshing, and the idea of it just made me smile while reading it. Now, of course, we have the emotional, heartfelt confession towards the end. So this whole chapter was kind of building up towards that as we get to the climactic stage of this route in general. However, the chapter decides to start off very comedic in the way that it shows us um, Kirisu going on roller coasters and recalling that non-canon chapter of 119 in where she has deja vu about being on a roller coaster before. And I love the idea of the haunted house staff members being more afraid of Kirisu than obviously being scary themselves. And that was great, because we know how scary and how intimidating Kirisu can actually be. However, the underlining story tone being told in this chapter was that Kirisu knows how she feels about Narayuki, but isn't sure if she deserves or even can act upon what her heart wants slash desires, until she finds the courage and the resolve to express herself openly and uh, truthfully. Now there was also one line from this uh, chapter from Kirisu that I really disliked and that's the line in where she states that Nariyuki would be happier with somebody else slash someone his own age. I personally hate the type of line from a character in where they know exactly how the person they're thinking of feels about them but then states that they would be better off without themselves. This kind of just, I don't know, it, it just feels weird. Like, Kirisu knows that Nariyuki loves her, and yet she goes, nah, nah, I'm too old for him. I'm sure that he'll want someone much younger than I am, and someone closer to his age. But didn't he confess to her? And would Nariyuki seriously do everything that he's done in previous chapters for nothing? I get it, it's been a couple of months uh, since uh, the whole kind of festival ordeal, and there's been no development in their relationship, so Kirisu might be thinking that that is something that's affecting Nariyuki. Maybe his feelings have gone away because of that idea. But again, would he have done everything for nothing? Like, would he have helped out Kirisu as much as he did if his feelings were so weak? Remember, Nariyuki wanted to fulfill his promise to her as a child. She's been working his entire life in order to make her happy and to keep that promise. Is waiting a few more months going really going to dampen his spirits? I don't think so. But the other purpose that this line serves, and I really did like this aspect, so there is a positive in that line that I disliked. The positive being that it shows Kirisu being jealous, which is a character trait that we've not seen from her character before. I love the scene in where she's reaching for Madayuki, trying to pull him away, while he's talking to someone younger. This of course tells us, as a reader, that she does have feelings for her, and he's starting to act. She is starting to act on her feelings, which I think is really nice, and builds up steadily towards the climax of this chapter. So now moving on to the Ferris wheel scene, I thought this scene was a really good emotional scene, and it had a bit of symbolism within it when looking at the gloves. Now, please note, before I go into this uh, symbolism explanation, I do need to state this could be me over-analyzing and kind of going too deep into something that's not actually there. But here's what I thought, and hopefully you find it interesting. So, obviously, we can look at it at the very purest and simplest form. Kusu gives Nariyuki some gloves. They're not very good, but he will always cherish it because it's a gift from the person that he loves the most in the world. But you could also look a bit more deeper into this and say that the gloves that she makes him are a reflection of how Kirisu currently feels. 
The fact that the gloves are torn could be symbolizing that Kirisu is torn herself as she doesn't know what to do. They're unfinished, meaning that she still has room to grow and room to develop in both character and in relationships. And the fact that these gloves look tattered and are barely holding on could be a reflection of Kirisu barely holding on to hope, hoping to make the owner of the gloves slash her love feel warm and comfortable. Whereas on the other hand, you've got Yuiga giving gloves to Kirisu that are complete, that are finished to a very high standard and quality, showing that Nariyuki's feelings towards Kirisu are pure and genuine. Again, I could be reading way too much into that, but I thought that was a pretty cool analogy, and uh, yeah, tell me what you think about that. So then the confession itself, using the name as a pun, uh, saying that he loves Maihafu, which of course means midwinter, was really nice, but a little bit cheesy and a tiny bit confusing, left me scratching my head for a few times, and I had to read the page over and over again, uh, for about a minute or so, just to fully understand what was actually going on, because the wording, for me, was a little bit confusing, especially when looking at Kirisu's reactions. However, when we get to the I Love You panel, the artwork was amazing, absolutely fantastic, gorgeous, beautiful, it really was phenomenal. The entire route has been filled with fantastic artwork and drawings, but I still feel like this particular panel was one of the best that we've had throughout the entire route. And again, that's saying something considering the top quality that we've had from this route so far. However, one thing I really didn't enjoy though was the following panels that came after this, because it turned a bit comedic before ending serious again. I thought that the comedic element to this kind of interrupted the flow and brought the emotional aspects and elements of the ending of this chapter to a subpar level. I really thought that Yuiga crying an overdramatic state was a little bit damp harsh and dampening to the chapter itself, making me kind of lose focus while trying to feel a connection between the two characters. However, that being said, I am happy that Kirisu finally admits her feelings and is starting to open herself up to new possibilities upon the horizon, showing us that her development has been worth it and has worked to create a new version of Kirisu's character in where she's going to be more happier in the future. So that aspect I really did like. It showed that the development paid off superbly. Overall, I really love the artwork from this chapter and the new outfit for Kirisu that we get at the start was probably my favourite outfit that we've seen her in thus far. The flow of the chapter worked well, um, but again, that small bit of comedy towards the end I thought wasn't necessary. Yuiga could have had a lot more mature kind of reaction instead of, um, you know, bawling his eyes out and looking very goofy. It, this would have showed that his relationship with Kirisu is that of a mature one instead of that of an immature one. Again, going back to that whole segment and panels that followed after us, I thought Yuiga's line about not being able to hold himself back anymore, a bit nitpicky, but also a little bit kind of creepy. Personally, as things do stand, I feel like the ending of this arc, the confession, falls in the weaker ending category of the We Never Learn five routes that we've currently had. I wouldn't say it's the weakest, but it's certainly not the best. At this moment in time, that is. Again, next week's chapter could change that, and hopefully it does, because I like being proven wrong. I'd rather be happy than right. It's just that the emotion and the impact at the end of this chapter here just wasn't there for me and didn't do much for me personally. So I liked the chapter, it was okay, but it wasn't brilliant. However, with next week's chapter possibly finishing off the Kirisu route, I want to know your thoughts and opinions on this chapter down in the comment section below. Do you agree or disagree with some of the thing, some of the things that I've said? If not, then that's fine. Let me know why in the comments and be respectful because we can all have a good civilized conversation. Just, you know, let me know. I'm always up for it. 
Anyway, like the video, you did, subscribe if you're new for more manga and we never learn content in the future. And if you want a good series to check out, I'm reading a webtoon series at the moment called um, Nice to Meet You, which is kind of similar to We Never Learn, but is kind of a romance comedy webtoon series that I'm really enjoying at the moment. So go check that out if you want to. I'll link it in the description below so you can go check it out. But other than that, have a great day. Alligator, Matt done it. Goodbye.